Okay, so welcome to the second part of our video tutorial teaching you how to assemble the Hobby RC Ready to Build 250 class quad kit. By now you should have already watched part one, which taught us how to solder the ESCs to the power distribution board, how to install the power distribution board, and how to mount the ESCs to the frame. In part two we're going to be installing the motors, installing the propellers, installing the flight controller, connecting the ESCs, and finally installing the battery. Now the motors we're going to be using in this build are the Emax 1806 motors. They come in two varieties, the clockwise version and the counterclockwise version. You can tell the difference by the labelling on the back of the box, and also by the colour of the nut on the top of the motor. The silver nuts spin in a clockwise direction, and the black nuts spin in a counterclockwise direction. The reason the nuts tighten in opposite directions is to stop the propellers from coming loose in flight. The direction of the spin of the motor, in conjunction with the thread direction on the shaft of the motor, actually helps the nuts to tighten the propellers on during flight. It's worth noting that there is a specific layout in which the motors have to be mounted onto the frame, or else it just won't fly at all. I'll include this diagram with the video in the description. In order to mount the motors onto the arms of the frame, we need to use the plastic adapters which came with the frame. Take each motor and fasten it onto one of the adapters using the allen key and two screws provided. Once you've attached the adapters onto the motors, you can then mount them to the motor arms using the small silver flanged screws provided. Tuck the motor wires through the holes in the frame before fitting the motors to keep them both neat and protected. We're now ready to fit the propellers. Take note of the difference between each propeller in a pack. They're designed to spin in opposite directions, with the leading edge of each blade always being higher than the trailing edge. Once again, I'll include a diagram with a video explaining which propeller goes where. As many of the more experienced multi-rotor builders are probably thinking right now, take the props off again before plugging in your battery for setting up your flight controller. Accidents can and invariably do happen. As you can see, it's starting to look a lot more like a quadricopter now, and we're ready to move on to mounting the flight controller. We're going to be mounting the flight controller on top of the frame on the crash cage with a self-adhesive foam pad. Before we do this however, it's a good idea to route the wires from the ESCs to the front of the frame where they will connect to a row of pins on the flight controller. At this point it's probably worth addressing a concern that you might be having. Yes, I admit that the flight controller is a little exposed here, but there are a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, this build is intended to be easily upgradable for FPV flight. That meant we chose to integrate a power distribution board, which we felt was best mounted inside the centre bay. Also, we will be adding the upgrade kit to this frame, which will mount directly above the flight controller, protecting it anyway. Secondly, if the NAS32 is mounted inside the centre bay, then you lose access to the USB port, which makes programming the board a bit of a pain. After a lot of discussion, we came to the conclusion that this was the best overall layout for this particular build. If you're still concerned about how exposed the flight controller is, then we do have two different products arriving very soon, which will provide a solution to this problem. When mounting the flight controller, take care to do so in the correct orientation. There is a small arrow on the PCB of the NAS32 which indicates the front. The self-adhesive foam pad does a very good job of keeping the flight controller stuck down to the frame. We actually ended up using the zip tie as well, but you don't have to. The next job is to connect the ESCs to the flight controller. Each ESC has a three-wire connector which plugs onto these header pins. There is a correct position for each ESC and a correct polarity for the connectors. Once again, I'll include a diagram with the video which makes this more clear. Once your ESCs are connected, it's time to fit the battery. To 
Take the self-adhesive Velcro and stick one piece on the underside of the frame and another piece on the battery. I cut down the velcro on the underside of the frame so I could tuck the XT60 pigtail from the power distribution board down through this gap. As the battery is the heaviest individual component in the build, mount it as centrally as possible to ensure the centre of gravity is in the middle of the quadricopter. Once your battery is mounted, take the four legs which came with your frame and fit them under the motors. It might help them to stay in place if you use a small amount of superglue as well. The last job in this build is to connect your receiver. It's best to use a receiver which supports CPPM as you will only need one servo wire from your receiver to the flight controller. This area at the back of the frame is a good location. Just make sure to keep the wire away from your propellers. Find a way to route your antenna and your quad is now complete. We'll include a link with this video to a tutorial explaining how to properly set up your flight controller using the PC configuration utility. Thanks for watching and as ever if you found this helpful don't forget to hit the subscribe button below.